day, my friends. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion, and we are coming to you from downtown Little Rock, Arkansas. Today we're going to check out the Bill Clinton Presidential Library. Days with Jordan the Lion begins right now. Here we are. Before we even go in, I like this. There's an Anne Frank tribute here. Has a quote from her diary, of course. And then they have an and Frank tree that they've planted. Ever since I was in elementary school, I've kind of had a fascination with the office of the presidency. So I'm kind of devoted to wanting to see all the presidential libraries at some point. Has no matter what their politics was or anything like that. They have these globe type things all over the property I've noticed. I like this one because of the As soon as we start, it was a $12 ticket. They have the presidential limo with some of the secret agents, the secret service handcuffs and things like that. Cadillac Fleetwood was the new presidential limousine in 1993. Only three of the vehicles were built by skilled General Motors employees in Warren, Michigan. It was built for the president's exclusive daily use. It says the roof was raised to provide increased visibility of the rear seated occupants and to not compromise security. That's a pretty cool thing to start out with. Now we take the escalator up to start. So I went to the third floor so I could see the replica of the Oval Office. As we know, the Oval Office is a major place for every president. They have a working office and a kind of an office for meeting for ceremonial things. The office was started in 1909 by William Howard Taft, but then it was moved by FDR. You can see they have photos, family photos of Hillary and Chelsea over here. They have it decorated the way it would have been decorated during his years of service. I know somebody right now is making the Monica Lewinsky jokes, but no, the dress is not here. And yes, that had, did happen in the bathroom of the Oval Office, but probably not something they're going to talk about here. But it's a beautiful recreation, full scale. And then, of course, his desk, where he would have signed everything, all the official documents. They were telling me that the Clintons picked the drapery here for when he was in office, and it was removed by Bush and by Obama, but then it was brought back by Trump, and it's still in there now with Biden. And kind of strangely, when I exit the Oval Office, they have a kind of a hangout photo op of the friend set. Obviously a 90s thing. It's a women's rights quilt. This was actually supposed to open in 2020 on the 100th anniversary of the women's right to vote. But because of the pandemic, it's opening now. <laughs> so, so she had a little time to add the smaller figures here, which are like Nancy Pelosi in Congress. That is the suit from the speech heard around the world. They have a quilt depicting Hillary there. There's President Clinton's baby photo. And those are Bill's parents. Virginia and William Jefferson Blythe. Here's a drawing that he did of High Noon, 1952. They also have his Cub Scout ID card made out to Billy Clinton. Hot Springs, Arkansas, 1955. And then this is also his Cub Scout. And then his Junior Deputy Badge. Billy Clinton, and Tom Sully. And then this is when he's still Billy Blythe. 
first grade report card. And then that's Bill with his stepdad, Roger Clinton. In Hope, Arkansas. Baptist Training Union card, Billy Clinton. There's our future president as a tenor saxophone in the band, the Hot Springs High School Band, running for student council. Oh, that's cool, his international student ID card. And college Bill and Hillary. A couple of hippies. This is a poster, Bill running for Congress, and it's signed by all the people that helped with the campaign. Of course, became governor of Arkansas, and was on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. And here's an article about young Hillary Clinton, 1978. Bill and Hillary at the governor's mansion gates. So now we've hit a section that is titled, Gifts to the President. And I'm seeing like a Mariner's jersey from throwing out a pitch and a first lady bicycle to Hillary and a seat to President Clinton, a Bob Hope golf bag, 1984, a welcome home socks banner, <laughs> their pet, some needlework of Bill Clinton. This is talking about the Clinton celebrating the holidays in the White House. Thanksgiving and Christmas and some of the Christmas decorations the Clintons brought with them and some art that someone made of them celebrating Hanukkah there's Bill Clinton reading it was the night before Christmas and speaking of Christmas look at the gigantic crystal tree that they have here on display president and mrs. Clinton invited the world-renowned glass artist Dale Chihuly to provide artwork for the White House Millennium Celebration held on New Year's Eve of 1999. Created two identical towers of glass titled Crystal Tree of Light, which were installed in the grand foyer of the White House and displayed until March of 2000. This was donated and installed here permanently. That's very cool. And here was their angel tree topper one of their Christmases and some of the ornaments that went on there and some of the Christmas cards that they sent out and there is a Franklin Roosevelt and Eleanor Roosevelt doll right there that they had then apparently Hillary mrs. Clinton had an Easter egg collection that she started while she was first lady and here are some of the presidents Easter eggs that she has, and some of the other ones that she collected. See one for Valley Forge. Of course, he played his saxophone on Arsenio, and they have some of the gifted saxophones that he has, including this one's kind of interesting. It's a statue of him playing the saxophone. That's the Clintons throwing a time period costume party. There's socks. And there is a football signed to Mr. President from John Madden. Happy birthday. And up there is President Clinton's jacket. Monogram jacket. Bill with Jackie Kennedy Onassis and JFK Jr. And there's a caricature of the family including socks. And here they have a table all set for like a state dinner, which they hosted many. Now these are many of the items that they decorated the White House with when they moved in, making it their home. Kind of interesting what they chose. Including that and these were some of the state gifts also that they received those swords and the daggers and then this was Hillary's dress for the 1997 inauguration festivities 
So once we come down to the second floor, in the center of the room they have a timeline of everything that he did in his presidency. Over here they have a display dedicated to the Little Rock Nine and it says that President Clinton was heavily inspired by what he saw here. It says seeing the Little Rock Nine face down the angry mom fascinated me and inspired an emotional bond that has lasted a lifetime. This is a plaque from the Bosnia Peace Talks. Peace Accord signed, Paris, December 14th, 1995. There's one of the UN helmets. And then this is talking about the assassination of Yitzhak Rabin. And it says that this was um, actually gifted to President Clinton. 100,000 people gathered in Tel Aviv for a peace rally. Yitzhak Rabin told the people that the size of the crowd proves the majority of the people really want peace. And it says that the, um, as a token of deep gratitude and appreciation to your immense contribution to the unfolding change in the political landscape of the contemporary Middle East, Yitzhak Rabin gave this to President Clinton as a gift. And there's Clinton at the Yitzhak Rabin funeral and President Clinton's yarmulke. Here on display they have a letter to Hillary Rodham Clinton from the Dalai Lama, 1995, saying that um, he was very glad to meet her and Chelsea very memorable evening. I felt that this trip to the United States was very productive and I was moved by the outpouring of support for the Tibetan people in the various cities that I visited. And here was a letter from Cheryl Crow, 1997, to President and Mrs. Clinton. Still savoring my experience of the inaugural festivities and I suppose this is a thank you letter of sorts for including me. I felt so proud to actually be present at the swearing-in of a president and first lady whom I respect. Hope you both are able to put your feet up, only for a moment to catch your breath. And then this is a, <laughs> it's a note to Hillary from Epi Leader, who is actually Ann Landers. And then here we have a letter, <laughs> Mr. C from Arsenio Hall. I wasn't able to travel east and celebrate with you in the flesh, but my Positive wishes and prayers are with you. Give my love to Hillary and Chelsea. And then here he responded, said that Hillary appreciated the compliment on the hat, wrote him back. Here's a letter from Elton John thanking the Clintons for helping with the AIDS Foundation, helping to raise money and everything they're doing. And then here they have President Clinton's 1997 State of the Union address. Or parts of it. In this exhibit, they're talking about how he restored the economy. First inauguration says there's nothing wrong with America that cannot be cured by what is right with America. And so today we pledge to end an era of deadlock and drift. A new season of American renewal has begun. To renew America, we must be bold. President Clinton, and this is what he played. It says for his Arkansas inauguration ball, that saxophone. Take a look at this, they recreated this. Where he'd meet with the chief of staff. Cabinet room. You can see on the left there's a bust of Washington and on the right of Benjamin Franklin. And here's another view of it from the end of the table.
And you can see on the back of each chair, it identifies who's supposed to sit there. And then right in the dead center, we have the Attorney General's seat here, and we have the Vice President's seat right here. And then President Clinton, or whoever would have been president at the time, would have sat right here. So that would have been that seat right there with the vice president directly across. And they're talking about here how they took on gun safety, passed the Brady Bill. So there's President Clinton with James Brady. And then that's a letter about handgun control from Sarah Brady. It says actually investing President Clinton launched the largest gun enforcement initiative in history, providing funding that enabled federal law enforcement officers to use the unique fingerprints of bullets to track down violent criminals. Then they have an assault rifle here, kind of like in a cage, and it says under the Clinton administration, these are banned as part of the 1994 crime bill. And then in this section, they have some of the documents he signed um, for environmental protection, clean air initiative, clean car initiative, and you can see Strom Thurmond is, has signed those. He's on a lot of these, kind of sponsoring the bills with President Clinton signing beneath. And this whole case here is dedicated to Hillary becoming a best-selling author and awards that she received, including a Grammy for It Takes a Village for the audiobook. So far it's a pretty good museum. I just, I kind of wish they would have some of his suits, things that he wore that would, you know, maybe the, the things that he wore on Arsenio or things that he gave inaugural speeches in. I always kind of look forward to seeing those kind of things when I go to museums, so haven't seen anything quite like that yet. And then this section is all dedicated to the campaign. Running against George Bush, then running against Ross Perot. And then he won, of course, all the blue states. That was the Electoral College for his first election in 92. And then this was his re-election. And then here are the buttons that were for the election. There's one of the campaign rallies. There they are at home. Attending the rallies, getting off the plane. Bill and Hillary playing ping pong after one of his speeches in Milwaukee in 1992 running for president. And of course, Bill and his running mate and vice president, Al Gore. So that's pretty much it. I just wrapped up the tour. I'll tell you, I've been to quite a few presidential libraries. I liked that they emphasized all the things he did but I thought there could have been more stuff. And what I mean is I thought maybe some of his suits from speeches and things like that would be here. Didn't really see any of that kind of stuff. But on the way out, you can get a socks mouse pad or presidential golf balls, magnets, take the Oval Office home with you. So it looks like you can actually buy Hillary and Bill signed items here. Her book. That newspaper is signed by Bill. So he signed it right up there. All the money goes to the center here. Autographed bust, $500. So there's actually one more thing that she told me at the front desk, because I said, is there no um, statues of the president here? Because that's the first time I've ever attended any presidential library that didn't have a statue of the president and they said no there is not a statue of the president or first lady 
but his final resting place is going to be out here which i almost didn't even think about you know honestly everybody most of the presidents are always buried at their presidential library but i almost didn't even think to ask glad she brought that up i am shocked though honestly i if you would have asked me i would have thought for sure bill clinton would have been a guy that would have had a a statue of himself at his library but no that day will come where he will be brought out here and he will be buried in the center of this kind of maze right here where the white stone is I wonder if they plan on having Chelsea and her family buried here as well, or if it will just be Bill and Hillary. So this will be his final resting place right here someday. Knock on wood. I don't want that on my hands. Right down from the bridge and right directly behind the presidential library. Well, my friends, that's gonna do it for us for today here in Little Rock, Arkansas at the Bill Clinton Presidential Library. Thank you all for watching. If you're new here, please hit the like button, please subscribe, and we'll see you all next time. Have a great night and goodbye.